Right, something's definitely not right with my stream. I don't know what is going on, but there is all sorts of crazy going on up here right now. Why is this happening? I do not know. I'm going to investigate my cam a minute. I haven't changed anything, although why are my cam settings not working? What could be wrong? That lamp's on, those two lights are on, the wall is on. Let's dim the study light a bit. Ah, uh, I've dimmed it as much as I normally dim it. <laughs> Well, it's a problem. I don't know. This is bizarre. I'm kind of reluctant to mess around with the settings of the camera. Maybe I will just quit and then start again. Web cam settings. <clears throat> Hasn't made much difference, has it? Let's try to turn this off. On. Nope. Really bright. Nope. Is it to do with the movement of the screen? I don't really know. Let's try moving this a bit. Nope. Well, that's strange. How about I close this? Nope. Okay, let's fill with some settings then. Uh, something is not quite right. But I don't know what it is. It's highly annoying. Uh, settings. Camera default. Yikes. That is worse. Okay. Let's just play with the settings a little bit here. Oh yeah, so these don't seem how I left them. Manual exposure too much. Gain. Oh, is that an improvement? No. Uh, brightness. Nope. Contrast. Uh, nope. Nope. Well. Slightly better, <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> it's such a black art filling with these settings. I mean, maybe I should just be like, go black and white for the evening. How about that? Hey, I look really sharp there <laughs> in black and white. Uh, white balance. Turn this up. Okay, so now I wonder if I can just change the chroma key on the webcam. Just a sec. Uh, how do I do that? Filters, uh, chroma key, green, what about blue? <laughs> I've cut myself out. <laughs> Magenta, 
What about custom? What about like a grey colour? White colour? Nope. Cut myself out. Green. Nope. Interesting. Let's put this contrast back down a bit. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot better, isn't it? That's interesting. I just sort of took the setting down and brought it back up again and it somehow fixed it. And I look pretty sharp as well. Very good. Okay. That will have to do <clears throat> enough messing around with my uh, camera. Okay, I'm going to show you some artwork now. So this is Arcane. She is the second command of the angel theme. So she's like a Japanese warrior kind of girl. And she's going to be dual wielding two samurai swords. And I think there's a lot more work in the detailing to go on. On the kimono, on the uh, body armor, um, and on the face. But it's getting there. It's looking uh, pretty good. Okay. Nice. All right, let's get on to where we left off. So let's get my notes open. Um, my collection. Yeah, so these are questions that I answered already. Cards in the main collection being equal quantity, yes. So we started working on that. Uh, let's bring open the editor. Here we go. As usual, a million welcome screens, welcome tabs. Ingle Merck. Okay, so I did a little bit of extra refactoring around the code here. So there's a couple of things I realized when I was looking back over it. One thing is in the um, user repo, uh, user card repo, this create packs for users, I'd missed out having the user ID in the filter so that's why every time it was creating the packs, it was creating them just on all users instead of the specific user. So I fixed that and mm. now get all cards is returning um, the expected results. And I fixed the specs as well. Let's have a look at that. Uh -huh. G test. So these should all pass. Hey Satan 3, you've learned a fair amount of Julia since last you were here. Awesome. I don't really know much about Julia. So you'll have to uh, tell us the good points. Um, and also what, what you're using it for. Go Mac. So we're all good on the specs. <laughs> right. So now I believe when we fire up the app, let's get a browser going. <laughs> at a glance. Awesome. I like to see it at a glance. New window. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Localhost three thousand. Right, let's log in. My collection. 
So now there's a quantity next to each card. So I know that I've got four of these common angels and I've got one of all the other cards. So now I'll be able to create a deck and then the deck should appear in a list under this column. And then we're going to click on the deck and this view here is going to change. Well, actually right now it's not going to change because we're going to allow you to put whatever cards you want in. Obviously, once you put in your, say we've only got one of these, once you move that in there, then this one will no longer be selectable, basically. And I think I'm just going to move the cards using a, an action here. So you just click on the drop down and you choose which deck to move it into. Actually, I think I'll do a bulk. So you'll tick. Can I do a bulk? What if you want to move four cards in? Mm. Well, I think I'll just do it by tick. And then it will show you how many are in the deck. Yeah. Right, so let's get deck, create deck going. I don't know how far I got with that, I can't remember. Julia is a lot less like Ruby and more language on its own. Yeah, well, I think Crystal is like that too. It started off being um, a Ruby, like comparing itself to Ruby. But now I think the Crystal community, they just say it was inspired by Ruby rather than saying it's like the same syntax as Ruby. Because now they're starting to sort of branch away from Ruby syntax. I've got a slight flicker here still. That's a bit annoying. Let's move this out of the way. It's not as noticeable if I move this in here a bit. I think. Yeah, I can probably bring this right up to here. Before I get flicker problems. Right out to the edge of my box. Uh, a bit further. Yeah, about there. Yeah, functional programming. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. You can go crazy with uh, all of the different uh, symbols that you can use in some languages. Like in Scala, you can basically create any symbol you like. And then it becomes a very weird sort of symbol based thing that you've got to figure out what's going on. I suppose it's alright if you understand it but if you don't then it's really cryptic. Uh, Crystal is primarily OOP. It's got a little bit of functional programming but it's mostly object oriented. Righty, righty. How far did I get with creating a deck? Collection, card, card, card. Post APO packs, post decks generate. Oh, I didn't, I didn't get very far at all. <laughs> I guess uh, this is going to do nothing. Let's inspect here. So I decided I'm only going to stream um, Monday to Saturday and Sunday I'm going to rest because I was getting a bit super tired. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, Satan 3, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Very simple indeed. I probably like forget as well. If I didn't do it every day, like I come back to the code three or four months later, I'd be like, what is this? What's going on? What are all these <laughs> strange symbols? 
network. So I guess this is going to do nothing. Yeah, it's not hooked up even. All right, let's go hook it up. So web app source pages. I think I made it component deny dex. Render deck. Oh, that's just the deck. My collection. Collection store. Load cards. Mm -hmm. Create deck. Okay, promise never. Fine. Okay, so for create a deck, we're going to need to go and make a something like this. Do save card. My collection. So create deck. It next to create deck. That ditch this one. Okay, so we just need a, a deck. It's got a name. Uh, oh, it's probably got a user ID. Has it got user ID? Does it really need user ID? It, no, it shouldn't. It's just a name. Have I got deck name up here? Yes, I have. Name, deck name. This is deck data. Encode the deck. This is a really handy thing in Mint. You just have to encode your uh, record and it does the work of converting it to JSON for you. Yeah, everything's a function. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think it gets harder when other people have to work on your code as well. If you've made some crazy symbols that are not like common knowledge. I suppose you could have some fun with it. <laughs> you could... Uh, create some interesting uh, functions that uh, do strange things, do unexpected things. Right, API deck. Let's post this deck data. Uh-huh. 500, 400. Do clear a response. This is like a. I'm gonna make this a collections error. Did not save deck. Something went wrong. So that seems pretty good. Is it compiling? Oh yeah, we need a, a record to hold the uh, deck. is like record deck request name stream yeah that's good maybe I should call this deck name actually create deck deck name. Alright, so now once we do that, we've got a clear. Do we have a clear? Yes, we do have a clear. Interesting. Okay, so I think I have to, ch well, I have to make something on the, on the end point here. Where is my other deck thing? Packs. Current user register login. Card, about packs, texture. Right, let's put it here. Dex. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Uh, UI create deck create UI create deck domain UI what's this deck purchase packs yeah uh, create deck haha <laughs> yikes so I, I got some new uh, cool toys recently um, I got one of those ring doorbells because I didn't have a doorbell before and the wind keeps flapping on the letterbox. So it always seems like someone's at the door. And uh, so I've got a camera doorbell that uh, um, when someone walks past the door, I get a motion detection. And when someone rings it, it pops up on my phone. It's kind of cool. But I spend the first like three hours of having it, playing with it. <laughs> and then after that, I spend about and I was staring at it, uh, and then I got bored. And then I also got some uh, Eufy cameras, which are these really awesome cameras that they're like small and they run on uh, one charge for a year. And you just like, they've got a magnetic base, you just kind of stick them onto things and they're pretty cool. So I, I mounted a few of those around the house and then I spent <laughs> too long uh, watching nothing happening, really. Okay, so this is UI deck. So on success, we are going to say user no, I'm going to say deck repo. I've got a feeling we don't have a deck repo over here though. Deck repo. Haha. -ha. Oh, thanks. There you go. Getting there. Post API decks. Deck repo insert. I mean, it's just UI deck uh, deck name. Let me just ditch the rest. Okay, so that gives me back. What does insert give me back? I do not remember uh, a deck. Okay. Oh, it takes user ID as well. <laughs> so I'm used to working in IntelliJ where it flips around when you do option command, it takes you to the last place you were, but this just flips you across the different tabs that are open. So that was slightly misleading. So this is a a real deck. Okay, and then we need to where are we? Well we're on the collection so we would like to see you do this. And we'd also like to pass user ID into insert as the first argument. <laughs> All right, so 
Square Trace Flight. UI page and you can use a card decks. Okay, so we now have decks. I don't think we've got a way to get decks out yet, have we? A deck repo. Oh, yes, we have. We've got to get all decks. Let's do that. Uh, get all cards. Gonna have to nest these. I'm gonna have to find a way to do something about the nesting here. Decks. All right, so I believe the decks could just go there. All right, does it blend? Yeah, well, something blended. <laughs> Don't know what blended. Let's try it. So, in theory, this get should have given me a page. Yeah, with no decks. So, first deck. Uh huh. So what happened? Posted to API deck with first deck. I basically said not found. So what does that mean? Oh yes. And S too many. Uppercase read line F might become uppercase read lines. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, that's vaguely familiar, actually. Right. The first deck. Great. Okay. So at least we've got some part of the way. Then what happened? Uh, maybe this is a better place to read this error. Oh, Dex does not exist. Yes. I got to restart the database. Did I add Dex to database? I don't remember. I only took one night off and suddenly I don't remember anything. Crystal has the pipe. Uh, no, it doesn't actually. That's Mint. So that... Um, uh, sort of pipeline operator is uh, is like a pipe. It just pipes functions together. And uh, Elm, it's Elm was the uh, mint space on Elm. So like if you look at some of these files I'm working in or, or mint like admin dot mint. So this in mint you have like a function with fun, and then you have the function name, and then you put the the name of the the name of the argument and the uh, type, and then you you have a return type, and so here's like example of the pipe. So the callback is here is a function. Well, it's a maybe of function, and so you can say pipe the callback into maybe and then map it, and then take the function and return a promise from the function. And this is executing the function, so it's basically just going to execute the uh, the the call the callback, and then because you get a maybe still, then you can say um, set whatever function uh, that you've applied, um, return it, or just return like a never, which is like a promise that doesn't do anything. So these pipelines are really handy. So they have them in Elm, and it's like from Haskell, really. Um, but it makes a nice line of pipes, which are easy to read. But I remember 
people suggested that Crystal could have them. Um, but Crystal's leans way more towards Ruby. Ruby doesn't really have them. So in uh, Crystal, it's more like joining things with dot instead of piping functions. And I think, um, uh, what's that one that's based on Erlang? Um, there's another kind of cool web thing based on Erlang that has a lot of piping as well. I think there's a web framework called Phoenix, which is written in this other Erlang derivative, which got lots of pipes. Okay, so database. Did I put it in the database? Where is the database? Here it is. Um, dex table. I do have it. I just, yeah, I just need to um, use the database. GDB. All right, so now it should work, but obviously I got to go register again. Uh, <laughs> totally misspelled my name there. What did I miss out here? Register. Okay. I need to go and make a whole load of more things. Right, Angel Common, five, Paladins, Rare, five, Demons, Epic, five, Undead, Legendary, five, uh, Angels, Insane, five. Right, there's all the cards. Let's go to the shop. Uh, buy a pack of rare. Right, here's my pack of rare. Let's make a deck. Uh, first deck. Yes, awesome. So now we've got our first deck here. Um, probably could use some separation between the the two things, but I guess that'll do for now. So on this first deck I need to be able to click it maybe I'll make it like a button for now and you'll click it and then you'll be able to see what cards are in the deck Yeah, so I'm just gonna make a a sort of update deck kind of thing. So this is a post, and we're gonna have a a put. Yikes, that's a big put. API deck do context. So I must be logged in and then we're going to get some parameters. So really this is only going to add, card. maybe I should be like add, to add a card. So I guess we'll just add one card at a time. Um, so then we'll say update probably on the deck repo or we'll add card deck repo add card now I could do it in bulk I said I was going to do it in bulk didn't I so uh, we would mm -mm -mm. add cards in fact if it was bulk Yep. UI add cards 
to deck. So we need the deck, not the name, but we need the deck ID. And we'd also need the, this is more like uh, UI add. This would be the deck ID. Yes, what else would we need? I uh, actually only came across Crystal because I was using Ruby. I needed to do something that was really fast and Ruby was too slow. And I started writing C extension, and then I got really like frustrated with C. And then one day, this guy was like, "Hey, you could write D extensions in Ruby." He did a presentation on it, and it looked pretty cool. So then I started learning D. Then I found out, like, it was like experimental. <laughs> the whole library that you could write extensions in Ruby with was completely experimental and like way far from being usable. But then I just started getting into D. I started. I went uh, maybe two, three years with D, and then I built an IntelliJ um, uh, language support for D, which took like two years. <laughs> and then I got bored with D, and I came across Crystal, and I was like, "Ah, if I'd just gone to Crystal, then I would have missed that whole D journey out." But I think Crystal wasn't ready at the time it was nowhere near what it is now um th like three four years ago five years ago actually something like that um ui uh, deck id so i think that's what we need and some cards Card IDs. And this probably will just give us back a, a result of some kind. What could give me back the deck? Yeah, give, could give me back the deck. And then once I've done that, I'm going to just reload everything. Yeah. Seems good. So add cards to deck repo. Where is deck? Spec. Here we go. Yeah, then I built IntelliJ. <laughs> I built a language plugin for IntelliJ. Didn't build all of IntelliJ. <laughs> Describe get all decks. Um, add cards. Add cards. Yeah, it was like a two year sidetrack. I didn't write much D code because I was too busy writing an editor. <laughs> should add a D five cards to the specified deck. All right, let's create a user and a deck. And then we'll say um, add cards, user ID, deck ID. So does add deck give us back the deck? I hope so. Yes, 
does. So this would be result values deck. So this is uh, add deck dot value as deck. So that'd be deck ID. User ID, deck ID, and some cards. Right, so we need to create some cards. This here doesn't do any card creation, does it? Let's go to the user card repo. Let's create random cards, all the themes. So this is like a store setup. And so I've got loads of cards. Now I need to purchase some cards. Use a copy for Okay. So this is going to give me my pack. Oh. I still have to go get them. Yeah, I don't care about the results. And then finally, I should get all cards. as array of UI user cards. This is cards as uh, value as array of UI user card. And we just want to pass the card IDs in, which are going to be card IDs, which is going to be Cards dot map card dot ID. I think that is what's needed. Okay, and then result should be a DB success with. Was there say an array of decks? No, just the deck. And then result value as deck cards. Let's just map these cards. Get the ID of them. Should be the same as card IDs. Maybe there'll be some ordering issue here. I've been virtually unaware of JIT compilers. I heard of them, but <laughs> didn't know how they worked. How Crystal went wrong. Um, Crystal has its own compiler, it has an incremental compiler. Um, it's the compiler is actually written in Crystal, which is kind of mind-boggling. And uh, Mint, it, Mint also has a compiler, and you have to compile it. And it basically, I think Mint has like a very simple grammar. Um, that so the compiler is probably quite straightforward for Mint. I should one day <laughs> I should one day have a look at the uh, crystal compiler I think one of the main benefits of crystal being written in crystal is that once you know crystal then it's pretty uh, nice to work with like it's not like you have to write in C or something like in if you wanted to like work on Ruby you'd have to work in in C um, but working on crystal you just work in crystal so it's pretty cool I figure out how pipeline is supposed to work <laughs> yeah Okay, I think that is a test. Let's 
give it a will. The uh, method doesn't even exist, so it's definitely going to uh, blow up. Deck repo, what's the number? 36. Yep, add cards is missing. So let's go fix that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Deck repo, def add cards. Ticks user ID string. Ticks card IDs. Oh, and a deck ID. Card IDs, which is an array of string. Really want to go back and refactor some of this to have types here. Right, so this is going to return a DB success of deck otherwise a db failure okay there we go right let's check these exists huh well I didn't really use it here why didn't I use it here I should have been like, hey, if user doesn't exist, you can't do this stuff. Let's get rid of this. So basically, I should be like doing the same thing that we do. Oh, yeah, that's because <laughs> I did the same thing here. <laughs> yeah, I totally need to do this. If user exists. And then else end. Uh, on this get all as well. I should be like, hey, if user exists, do this stuff. Otherwise, uh, else could not. Cards for unknown user. For non existing user. Right, same deal for add cards. <laughs> and the same deal for is it card repo? Nope, user card repo. Yeah. If user exists, do all this stuff. Otherwise, do this. Fail to get all. Cards for non existing existing user. Alrighty. So add cards. We need to get deck. Oh, uh, let's get the deck. D run connection war no Julie has some support for multi dimensional arrays. So we went into a rather confusing things. <laughs> yeah. Allows the use of spot space, comma and semicolon. Wow. It's pretty uh, strange. Wow, maybe uh, multi-dimensional arrays are really important for Julia's uh, problem solving. What does it do? 
what's its main thing? Oh, for high performance. Hmm, multiple dispatch. Asynchronous IO. Data visualization and plotting. Data science, machine learning. Scientific computing, parallel computing. Interesting. Yeah, I'll have to have a look further into Julia. Once I get through Crystal, it is. <laughs> right, if years exists and Dick exists. What should we do if they both exist? Oh, we'll go find the deck and then we'll update it. We'll get it and we'll update. And we'll say um, cards. Now then, hmm, card IDs. Should I go and check if all the card IDs exist? What did I say I was going to put here though? Where's my card? Where's my deck? I said I was going to put an array of user card here. What's a user card? Yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, I probably just want an array of card ID. Probably that's the right thing. Yeah, that's going to screw up our... Uh, Our repo insert. Oh, yeah, we just insert deck to H. Oh, that'll be right. Okay, so this is more like card IDs. Which does mean get all decks. Uh, I wonder if I should return all the cards for a deck when I get all decks. I probably should. It'll make things a lot easier. Because then I'll have all the data. And there's not going to be like loads of decks. So it should be alright. Okay, so table decks get deck ID, update cards with card IDs. Run that. Connection. Uh, this will give me a result, and I can say um, again here. I'm not really checking if that was successful or not. Probably a similar issue to on card repo. Where's insert? 
create packs. And I'm checking it there. Uh, yeah, here. Okay. Yeah, okay, so result get yeah, so that's putting that in there. Then really I should say here if result errors is zero V O V. Uh if result errors is zero then we're good to return the deck Do I have like, yeah, on existing deck? What's that return? Yeah, the deck. Existing deck, deck ID. Okay. So if there's no errors, do that. Otherwise, let's say. Did not add cards to deck. Something went wrong. There we go. What could possibly go wrong? Should add all the cards. Yeah, these. This should return the deck. Yeah, and right now the deck. Oh yes, card IDs. What's card IDs? Yeah, I was saying maybe a deck should. Maybe I should return a UI deck here. Yeah, 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 yeah. A UI deck would be nice. Where's your UI deck? Uh, so UI deck has an array of user ID of UI user card. Yeah, so that makes sense. I like that. So self from QR. Uh, so I should be able to say here uh, from. You are uh, actually. I don't have anything that converts one deck from another deck. So this is probably what I need here. Yeah, that should give me a UI deck. All right, so. I get UI deck back. UI deck has cards. Where are these cards going from? Uh, it's coming from something you pass in. What, what, what? UI deck dot new. You UI user cards from cursor QR cards. Yes, I see. We don't have cards here. We now have card IDs on the QR. Yeah. This query response is. Yeah, it's it's creating it from a uh, so 
the UI deck. User card repo. Deck repo. UI deck from QR. Yeah, so get all decks was yeah so card ids yeah so it's not going to work basically needs to do something with this array of card ids in order to get the ui deck for this to work so What's a good way to do that? So I mean that this is now going to work if we have to pass in the cards here, and don't really want to do any repo stuff here, so I'm going to have to pass them in really. So maybe I just pass in the the cursor of Q, QR cards. I think I have to really. these in here. So am I using from Kiss or anywhere for UI deck? I think probably not. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, fine. So probably get rid of that. And then in deck repo I need to pass in the cards here. Either cards are going to be UI user card from Cursor. So now we just need to go look at the cards. So I've got a whole lot of card IDs on D. D dot card IDs. That's like a list, I think. So, for each card ID, uh, this is the ID, this is the card ID. I just gotta look it up. I think there was a get all. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Actually, yeah, I think I think that's right. I think I can just say something like uh, r dot table cards get all like that. I'm pretty sure that works. On, well, I've used that somewhere. Where else do I use that? Um, yeah, here we go. Get all. Where is it? I can't type. Ha, that's weird syntax. Dot. And then what's that three three lines to set all elements of an array that equal to zero to four? Yeah, interesting. It's like learning a new sub language, isn't it? Yeah, so I can just pass all the IDs in there. Awesome. I think I don't know if I need to A on that or not. Uh -uh. So this should be cards. Get all card IDs. And this should just go in here then. And 
and then that should sit on there so I can get all decks will work and then when you add card I was saying a one UI deck and UI deck from CR okay. yeah so the second thing I need here is to go get the cards of the deck So I do have them all. Let's get those. That's all the card IVs. Okay, that's all the cards. And I think. All card IDs. Uh, and then I think I have to, that should be a cursor. So then this would be cards. I think that's it. Let's try. This type must be new fair reviews because your deck not new fair UI deck or nil deck repo 43. Mm -hmm. What's your problem? Something could be nil, really. Not DB failure UI deck or nil. What gives back a nil? I guess it's. Uh, card IDs could they be nil? Add cards. What could be nil here? Something could be nil. DB failure, UI deck, or nil. Oh, hold on a sec. I don't have a DB success wrapped around this. Where's this UI deck? Yeah, this needs to have a DB success around it. that. Uh, Tells me you fail, do you success, you are dead. Not you fail, yeah. Okay, awesome. So now it's just the nil to get rid of. Um, so I suppose this could be nil. Forty-three. Mm -mm -mm. This be nil. Oh no, I see the problem. Yeah, go sleep. <laughs> Twenty hours. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, hanging out, watching my stream. Go take a nap. I think I need to take a nap too. <laughs> what time is it? Yeah, I'll probably go next another half an hour, and then I'll take. I'll go to bed really. It's like ten o'clock here. Yeah. Ten past ten. Okay, so add cards, see if you can add new cards to text something wrong. And this failure is basically this one. It's only four. <laughs> what, 4 a.m.? 
or 4 p.m. p.m. I guess. for deck oh yes that's because we changed that so our deck we've got a spec is now not got cards on it what line was that line 46 yeah so deck's got card IDs but actually this should be a UI deck which <coughs> will have cards on it. Okay, failure, awesome. <coughs> oh yes, this user already exists. So this is, uh, this is like add cards user, add cards. SG test. Let's just run this. Spec specs. Deck with a spec. Uh, Thirty six. Oh yes. Missing hash quantity. What quantity? Quantity? Uh, uh, uh. Let's just do this first. Make sure I got nothing wrong in the setup. Right, that's all good. And now let's do this. Okay, so quantity is missing. All right. UI user card. from cursor. I think I pass quantity into one of these things. So UI deck UI user card UI user card it has no quantity on UI card user card does have a quantity that's just on the card oh I see quantities on your user card but not on card but is on user card okay <clears throat> obviously did something stupid here uh, so user card dot new oh yes quantity user card do I really mean user card Where's user card? 
ID, okay, user ID, card ID, quantity. Seems alright. So get me the deck, update it with the card IDs if they exist. If there's no error, get me all the card IDs and then uh, from Kisser cards. Right, this should be Kisser. And then the UI deck from QR takes. To, oh. Till it, nope. Till it's get deck ID and connection. I think I'm missing. Am I missing something here? Where's that one end? From QR takes user cards. UI deck from QR. UI deck takes a QR and some user cards. User cards should be an array of user card. UI deck dot new. ID, user ID, name, user cards. Hmm. User card. Hundred and thirty. So you are user card. Okay, so I guess you can't just say get all card IDs because that will give us back something that doesn't have quantity on it. Cards doesn't have quantity on it, does it? Mm -mm -mm. Add cards. Maybe I shouldn't be looking in cards. Maybe I should be looking at user cards. So what is a user card? <clears throat> it's a mapping of card and easy user ID. That's where I get the quantity from. Or the other thing I could do is figure out the quantity. So I could check it against the, uh, yeah, I could check it against user cards to get the quantity hmm and then make a note <clears throat> I think I'm gonna leave it there for this evening
So let's put a note here to do need to find the quantity because table cards doesn't have quantity and the user cards user card has quantity okay so let's make a note here this is really more like uh, create deck So tasks <laughs> didn't mean to do that. All right, tasks is going to be one um, on yeah, because that's so big and bold on add cards find. The quantity for each UI user card. Yeah, and then return UI deck from create deck with the array of UI user card. That's it. Okay, that's what we'll do next time. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's good. So right now stuff's a bit broken. Uh, I think, uh, G test, just check it. <clears throat> See how many broken, I think there was just that one well, actually, I think we're going to have the same problem with uh, this one because here we're also doing the same thing here. So let's put it to do here as well. Twenty four examples, one error. Uh, I'd imagine get all decks is failing. Where is the spec for get all decks? 23. Uh, interesting. Get all decks is fine. UI deck. Where's that fine? This is fine. Let's pee out the decks here because I'm a little confused. Cards is empty. Oh, right, I see. The only reason it's working is because we didn't add any cards. Um, yeah, so this test really we should, to make it a better test, we should add cards. That's it. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. 
and I'll be back tomorrow night, nine o'clock, and we'll continue with um, working on deck repo, adding decks. And yeah, we're getting close now. Once we get these decks added, the next thing then will be on the front end, we'll have an action here, we'll click it and it'll say, uh, actually no, we'll have a, a, a bulk, we'll have a lot of uh, select boxes. You'll tick the ones you want and I think it'll pop up and with a drop down saying move uh, to deck and you'll choose the deck and go submit and then it'll populate the cards in the deck. I think when you click on the deck here I think it's just going to open up a different view of this but it's going to show you the deck view and some cards if if you've already added it it won't be selectable because it'll be already in the deck and i think we'll just have a list of the the name i think of the card because that should be unique in the deck and the quantity yeah that's it all right thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow night bye bye